I want to show you how to use the bond worksheet on the HP B2 Plus financial calculator. Now the first thing you'll want to know how to do is how to clear the bond worksheet. Now there are two ways you can do this. You can hit this blue upshift key and above C it says C mem, clear memory, and there are a bunch of different memories here, a bunch of different worksheets. Um, zero corresponds to the cash flow worksheet and they're written right next to it. I don't know how well you can see it. So you don't have to remember this. One is time value of money, four is break even, seven is the bond worksheet. And it tells you they just cleared the bond worksheet. If you have nothing in memory that you need to keep, you can clear all. And that's this downshift key and C, which is clear all. So the information you'll put in goes into one of these two columns here, or two rows. And the first function here is uh, accrued interest. The second is uh, yield to maturity in percentage terms, or yield to call if it's a callable bond. The dollar price, the coupon percentage, and the call value. If it's a callable bond, it will have a price that it can be called at and that'll be at a premium to the par value. In this next row we happen to have um, d.my m.dy which is the calendar format. This tells us do you want to do day dot month year or do you want to do month dot day year. In the US we usually do month and then day and year. If you don't see anything here, it's set for month, day, year. If you toggle it, and you can toggle it this way, it'll say D.MY, so it tells you that you have this format. All right, since we usually do this this way in the States, I'm going to toggle it back. Um, then you have 360 slash ACT, so the day count calendar. 360 days or the actual 365 day calendar. Sometimes we use 360 days in financial calculations. Semi versus annual. So um, do you have semi-annual coupons or annual coupons? If you have semi, it'll say it here. And again, you can toggle it the same way. If you don't see anything, that means annual coupons. And then the last two are settlement date and maturity date or redemption date. So let's take a look at an example here. Let's compute the price of a 4% bond with a settlement date of January 1st, 2016 and a redemption date of January 1st, 2021. Let's assume the yield is uh, four and a quarter percent. So this is a five-year bond and we're going to assume coupons are paid semi-annually. So I've set for semi-annually. So you have to put in the settlement date, and the way you put it in is you put in the month, and then you put a dot, and then it tells it the day and the month are coming. So the, so the day is 01, and 2016 is the um, year, and so let me hit that shift and settlement date. And you can see it puts it in as 1 1 2016. The five here tells you the day of the week it is. Number one is Monday, number seven is Sunday, so five would be Friday. Do the same thing for the redemption or maturity date 1.01 01, 2021. And let me put that in. Okay. So we have the date, and again, that happens to be a Friday. We need to put in the um, coupon rate. We can put it in. It knows it's semi-annual, so it'll do the calculation. It'll divide it by two. So let's put in 4% as the coupon percentage. Okay, I'm not going to bother with a call value. If you don't put one in, they treat it as 100. And we have to put in the yield which is four and a quarter percent. So 4.25, and I'm gonna put that in as the YTM. And hopefully if we've done this correctly, we're gonna get a price, and we get a price of $98.88.
All right, which makes sense. The interest rate went up, the bond price should be below the $100 par value. This, this uh, calculator treats the um, par value as 100. Let's check. Let's see if this works if we just use the time value of money function keys. So I don't have anything in my time value of money function, but let me clear it anyhow. So I'm going to hit the up shift key, clear memory, and number one is time value of money. This happens to be set for one period per year, so I'm going to have to do the adjustment myself for the yield and for the coupon payment. Okay, so N is going to be 10 periods because it's a, um, a five year bond, but coupons are paid semi annually. The um, par value or future value is 100. And we're going to put in the coupon. Okay, here you put in a dollar value. So it's a four dollars a year in interest, which means you get two dollars every six months. So that's the PMT. And we put in the yield to maturity. We have to put in half of this, 4.25 divided by two. And let's put that in as the interest rate per year. And if I've done this correctly, we get the same price for the bond. So the you can see that the bond worksheet for a five-year bond, or just doing it using the regular time value of money function keys, gives you the same solution. So in some cases, you may be given this kind of information. In fact, it may not exactly be a full five years. It might be, you know, four years and eight months in which case you'll want to use the bond worksheet to do your calculation.